Osobliwo za presvetu, prečesto preblagosloveno, slavno vladečicu našu Bohorodicu i presnodivo Mariju. Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, and the Lord in all places, and fill us all things, treasure of blessings, and give us life, come into God and us, and send us from every sin, and save our souls, so oh, good one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Brethren in Christ, Laudetur Jesus Christus in Sequila. This is Timothy Flanders with the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to the Guild Family Stream. This is the stream for the Guild. Thank you, old guild members. Thank you for your support of this apostolate. Your support helps the Flanders family with income. It helps all of our volunteers, authors, helps us grow this apostolate. And the, as usual, the first 10 minutes or so of this conversation will be broadcast live, uh, or rather publicly. And if you want the full thing, you have to become a guild member, meaningofcatholic.com slash register. We ask all guild members to make a financial contribution to the apostolate and invoke our lay patrons every day, which are Mary and Joseph and St. Anthony of the Desert for all clergy and seminarians. So today we're talking about the mystery of the human heart. This is a propos, obviously, because of the feast day today, the feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And this is rather poignant, acute. Um, it, it really, you know, the, the phrase in English cuts to the heart, it cuts to the heart or the heart of the matter. Um, these are all phrases that speak to this mystery, this mystery of the human heart, which is revealed to us today in this feast day. And so we're going to take a look at a little bit. We're going to attempt to scratch the surface on this great mystery. And as always, it's going to be just scratching the surface. Um, and to start off, I wanted to share personally as to why I think this is such an important topic. <clears throat> um, it's uh, something that I personally have struggled with in my own spiritual life um, of being too intellectual. Uh, there, I think, especially in men, there can be a spiritual malady in which one sort of intellectualizes everything, where we live in an abstract world and we are not connected with the reality in which we live. In particular, the persons with which we interact. We can be so caught up in the clouds of our own ideas that we can be disconnected with the persons, the reality that we face. And when I have grown to think about the heart and to consider the hearts of others, I have found that my own, I think this is all, this is really just a form of intellectual pride, really, this sort of disconnection between one's head and one's heart. <clears throat> it's a form of intellectual pride. And for me, thinking about the hearts of others and the way in which I can win their hearts. So like if, if we're in a disagreement or we're trying to win over someone to the faith or a conversion, things like that, or even just taking care of my kids. When I consider their hearts, it helps me operate more in reality instead of in an abstract universe that doesn't exist. So the heart, it seems to me, at least, certainly in my case, um, but I think this is true for many men in particular, but 
Um, the heart concretizes reality. The heart makes concrete what is real. And this is certainly true in marriage in particular, because the analogies used for marriage is that the two become one flesh, but there is a headship with the male, but there is a heartship with the female. So that St. Paul says, he who loves his wife loves his own body. So there is this, and there's there's a there's a sense in which a man's own um, headship or lack thereof is reflected in the heart of his woman, and this is this mystery of the human heart as it plays out in matrimony. What's very interesting is that the the mystery of the human heart is very central to Holy Scripture. I, I actually looked it up in preparing for this uh, broadcast. Um, the word heart is mentioned 1,012 times, according to the English of the Dewey Reams. And the very first mention of the heart is quite poignant. The very first mention is in Genesis chapter 6. And this is the the Nephilim passage. And it says this on, in chapter five, and God seeing that the wickedness of men was great on the earth and that all the thought of their heart was bent upon evil at all times. It repented him that he had made man on the earth and being touched inwardly with sorrow of heart. He said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth for man, even to beasts. So we have this sorrow of heart where God himself in his revelation to Moses is revealing his heart. And it is a sorrow of heart that God reveals to us in that he is constrained to destroy man in the flood. And I think this is reflected in this sorrow of heart is reflected in the glorious created sign of God's heart, which is the rainbow. And how this, this glorious sign is a truly a, this beautiful manifestation of the heart of God, this sorrowful heart that did not wish to destroy man, but did so. And yet promise it, promised unmerited, an unsolicited promise to never do it again. So this is this mystery of God's heart, which is, which is just reflected in the human heart. So in this conversation, we're going we're gonna to touch on uh, one spiritual writer. Or I'm going to read through some of the antiphons that are given in the feast day today that are all these scripture passages of the heart. And then we're going to read a number of different passages from Dietrich von Hildebrand's book, The Heart. And this is a philosophical investigation of the heart. And then it's a, it, it's a philosophical and spiritual meditation on the sacred heart as the sacred heart is revealed in Holy Scripture. So that is the conversation today. That's what we'll talk about today. And uh, again, if you want the full broadcast, you have to become a guild member, meaningofcatholic.com slash register, and just make a financial contribution and invoke our lay patrons. And you can be a part of a guild community 